Hey people, welcome to my channel. So glad to have you here. Today I'm going to be doing a cage review of a cage that I have already used um, and I actually keep even though it's not a suitable cage to, for a full-time enclosure. But I'm going to show you the one that I already have and I've al also ordered another one just so you can see the full intention of it because I threw away most of what comes with it because it's utterly ridiculous. This is the Habitrail Oboe Twist. So I want to start out by telling you why I have this, why I keep it, and what this is all about. <laughs> so this cage I got originally because once I realized that Chickpea's existing cage was a travesty and it remains as such, I was upgrading her. I wanted to get her, you know, the biggest possible habitat, but I needed something in the meantime that was a little bit better than what she had. This was, believe it or not, tragically an upgrade from what she was in. And oddly enough, I actually had this cage years ago when I had mice, which I also didn't know anything about back then. Uh, we're talking... 15 years ago, maybe. You know, I was keeping mice according to pet store standards, which of course are woefully insufficient. Um, what I do like about it, and the reason I still have it, is basically for transport, but it, it does have a deep enough base that they can snuggle in and make themselves comfortable for the short amount of time that they're in here. And also, it has plenty of ventilation, and it has this great top door. It is huge. I love it. It's very easy to access everything in there, including your hamster, of course. And it locks quite securely. Um, they can't push anything up on it. it. It is just a slider, but there's nothing, like, they can't reach it from the inside. So it is pretty secure. Now, this. The reason there's a big black band on the bottom of this is because it arrived cracked. And it's not the first one that arrived cracked. The original cage I had 15 years ago is long gone. I don't have that anymore. When I reordered this, I ordered it from Chewy. And this is not a reflection on Chewy's shipping or packaging or anything. This is because of the way it's packaged by the manufacturer. The base arrived cracked. So I contacted Chewy and I told them the base arrived cracked. Chewy customer service was phenomenal. Within... 20 minutes of emailing them, they had shipped a, shipped a replacement and they said, don't worry about this one, do what you want with it, keep it, donate it, we don't need it back. Awesome, right? The cage arrived in two days, super cool. I opened it, same exact problem. Same crack in the same place. I emailed Chewy again. I can't believe this is happening, but I, the second one arrived the same way, same crack. Same thing happened. No question. No problem. Immediately they shipped me another one. Guess what happened? Third cage. Same problem. Same crack. So this one is actually that third cage. I um, emailed Chewy again and I said, you know, this is the cage I wanted for temporary use, but I'm not, I'm not going to have you guys ship a fourth cage. And they were really great about it. And they said, we're so sorry. This is unacceptable. Um, please do as you wish with the cages. And they issued me a full refund. At that time, I paid $35 for this cage. And this is um, Gorilla water, like water seal. It's a waterproof tape. It's thick. Um, but it does the job. Like I could fill this with water and it would hold. I don't, but I could. Oh, hi, I'm still here. I wanted to show you how Chewy packaged it. It's per, it's secure. There's no damage to the box. This is the way every single one of these cages arrived from Chewy. So if the um, cage in this box is cracked, that will be number four that I have received. All from Chewy and all cracked. So we're going to see what happens when we open this box. The price of this cage on Chewy has gone up by 20 bucks. So this was $55. <laughs> it's definitely not worth that. 
Now, it doesn't say OVO on the box anywhere. And on their website and everything, it does not say whoop, um, have a trail OVO twist. But if you look it up on Amazon or anything, although it's currently unavailable on Amazon, it's kind of unofficially part of the Habitrail Ovo line. It connects to the Ovo line. And the Ovo line is hugely problematic. Much in the same way that the Critter Trail line from KT is very problematic. <laughs> and it finds entirely new ways to be a total, utter disaster and wildly inappropriate for anything to live in. So this is how it's packaged. It has this white cardboard thing around to support the box, but in the other three that I opened, it did not support it enough. We've got all of our plastic accessories here, which we will get to, because boy are they fun. Plastic bag that exposes the base. Moment of truth. Is it cracked? Let us see. Not cracked. Miracle of miracles. Maybe it was a bad shipment. Since I got one right after another. But, yeah, okay. So, there's the base. Survived in one piece. Awesome. Put the top on. And snap them into place. That's it. And it holds pretty securely. I've never felt that it was going to go anywhere. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, as it relates to hamsters. Look at this. So it's got this little tube here. And this little spot right next to the tube. Hello. <laughs> That's supposed to be like a platform feeding area. It is ridiculously tiny. And it hangs on this ledge inside right here. Just kind of perches like that. Leaving this inexplicable, unusable space around it. Don't know why. So you have to assemble this the right way because there's a notch. And if you put it in a different place, it won't go in all the way. And it's really hard to get out if you do it wrong. So, I recommend not doing it wrong. So there's that. If you have it lined up right, they snap right in. There we go. And now, one of these twisty locking rings that Have a Trail is so proud of because they have this kind of luxating little inner ring that supposedly helps it lock and be more secure because if you turn it a little bit it's tighter um it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference there's the water bottle more about that in a second ridiculous joke of a water bottle <sighs> these wheels first of all this is small it's a seven inch wheel it's like a a donut almost it is so enclosed here that uh i get i I guess the idea behind making it so enclosed is to help keep your hamster from flying out, which like fine, but it also keeps waste trapped in there. Now they think they're solving this problem by having this channel all along the bottom, these holes that are intermittent. That is not solving the problem because A, <laughs> the wheel still fills up with pee. If you have a wheel here, the wheel is going to fill up with pee no matter what. But what it does, of course, is provide prime opportunity for them to injure their little feet or tails, depending what you've got in here. So it goes right in this little notch on the back here. So that is really, really noisy. It's really squeaky. It's rattly. No, no. Okay, so you put the top on. And there we go. That's the whole thing. It's all put together. Gorgeous, right? <sighs> First, we're gonna talk about the water bottle. This, if you're at all familiar, 
is the Ovo water bottle. It has no ball. It has nothing in there to control the flow of water. It's gravity fed. There's a learning curve in learning how to fill this so that it doesn't drip. So you're supposed to fill it, leave a certain amount of space, and then invert it and shake it and like let the water start to fall and it, it forms a vacuum. And it does. If you fill it correctly, this will hold the water until your pet tries to drink out of it. As soon as they start trying to drink from it, they're disrupting the vacuum. It inevitably leaks and causes a terrible mess. And this is the only place you can put it, is right here, mounted on this tube. It has this special housing for the water bottle. There's no other place you can put this on this enclosure or any other enclosure. It is a ball. It's utterly useless in any other place. You have to put it on this tube. And this tube is two inches in diameter. It's very small. This little thing right here, your hamster. Imagine a Syrian hamster trying to get inside of this. And then they have to poke their heads straight up to get a drink. There's nothing natural or comfortable about that. And now I can tell you about my experience with this water bottle. When I had mice, because I did try it, because part of what led me to buy this cage in the first place was aesthetics. And boy, were they going after me with something like this. A cage like this is going after people who hate critter trails aesthetically. So people who some wanted something a little more modern, a little more streamlined, this is what that is intended to satisfy. This is a design forward cage. It gives no thought whatsoever to function, comfort, safety of the animal. This is a torture device as far as I'm concerned. Just picture a full grown, ethically bred, long haired female Syrian trying to get a drink from that. It's, it's really upsetting. The water bottle is a disaster. Oh, and as I was saying about my mice, um, because this would inevitably leak and you can see this cage, there's not a lot to it. There aren't a lot of places for them to go. I did have a couple little hides in my cage, but what could they really do? Where could they really go? What little place did they have to feel secure? Right here. You know, they dragged a bunch of bedding in there because that's where they wanted to nest. And then the water bottle leaked all over it. So then they've got all this wet bedding. And even though they left after the bedding got wet, they had to go in there in order to get a drink. So until I noticed, which fortunately wasn't too long, they had no choice but to sit in that wet bedding. And you know, these tubes are not watertight, so it leaked all over my table. It's just a really bad, really bad design. It looks nice but it is a horrible, horrible design in, in terms of um, animal welfare. This system was clearly designed to sit very prettily on a bookshelf and fit into someone's life rather than someone making a space to fit a hamster's life. So now we're gonna talk about this little thing again. <laughs> and in order to like properly talk about this really, really weird feature, I have to read you what their website says about it because it's utterly bonkers. For those of you who don't know, Habitrail is a brand owned by the parent company Hagen and Hagen makes, um, they own a lot of pet care brands, some unrelated to hamsters like um, Fluval, Marina, Nutrifit, Cadet, um, Living World, Living World Green, Vision, there's a bunch of them. They just decided that this was their designer enclosure. On their website, they call this a hamster cage with a design twist, which is why they call it the twist. They say the idea for the Habitrail twist came from a market need for a fresh, contemporary looking hybrid hamster cage. I'm not really sure what they mean by hybrid. Like a hybrid of what? Of bad design and other bad design? It's absurd. Um... And they said the new cage had to have its own identity within unique design and color personality, as well as a look and feel that blended in nicely with existing Habitrail systems. 
None of that is about hamsters. That's just a, all about human aesthetics. One of the biggest challenges was to de develop a unit that would satisfy the spatial needs of hamsters, but also respond to the desire of small animal owners who sought a space-saving cage unlike bulky traditional cages. In other words, something that fits on a bookshelf. Moving forward with the oblong model, our designers developed other features to satisfy key needs, such as easy assembly and maintenance, which is about people, viewing clarity, which is about people, and hamster comfort, which they did not satisfy. Um, a deep base was developed to improve litter collection, as well as to protect hamsters from drafts and provide a greater sense of security. Not deep enough. A light shade of blue was used to allow an unobstructed view of the interior. I, I don't know why that's exciting. It's barely tinted. But okay. Um, also, the inner rounded corners prevent gnawing and simplify cleaning. These are not rounded corners. It's an oval. The, the ends are oval, which means all they did was take away more floor space. Great job, guys. The team designed a large upper wire frame for maximum air circulation with a supersized plastic door that opens widely for easy inside access. The clear door allows a great aerial view inside the cage and includes an easy to use sliding lock that prevents unwanted escapes. Those are the things I like. Those are the reasons I keep this cage. But here's the piece de resistance, which is about this beast. I call this innovative interior cage design. To encourage natural hamster habitats, they designed an innovative elevated feeding area to make the hamster work for food just as it would in nature. It also stimulates exercise. To make life easier for owners, because that's what matters, the feeding platform eliminates the need for dishes, which often get tipped over and create messy spills. For additional workouts, the team included an exercise wheel, <laughs> some kind of them, as well as a space-saving water bottle located outside the home. We've already talked about that nonsense. They're so freaking proud of this. Again, what it, what is that? There's not even an indentate. They call this a feeding area. It's literally two inches long. There's not even an in indentation to hold food. It's just flat in there. It's just flat. So their idea of great exercise and making their hands work for food is crawling up this skinny little tube, which has no tread on it. It's just slick plastic. And then they get up there and just sit on their food while they eat it, which grant, granted hamsters often do, but there's nowhere to sit up there. There's no, there's nowhere to even hold food up there. You could put a couple lab blocks and a few seeds, but it's all going to just fall down the tube if you put too much in there. You know, they only expect you to have an inch or two of bedding in here. So their intention is that they're going to climb up this tube and then just look out over their, the vast expanse of their domain. I don't know. But they're so proud of this stupid thing. It's the most pointless, ridiculous waste of space I've ever seen. The cage unit itself is totally fine for temporary use and transport, but the rest of it is just absolute trash. Uh, I want to go to Chewy and tell you what they say about the size of this cage. Now they say that it is 18.9 by 9.5 by 7.2 so I'm not really sure what those measurements mean because it's I, I think that's the dimensions of the actual box because once it's assembled it's obviously taller than 9.5 inches but the 18.9 by 7.2 is what they say are the dimensions of the cage which it's not well on Amazon it says it's 20 inches and I think that that is measuring from end cap to end cap but the actual base of the cage, which I measured internally in both directions, it is 16.5 by 6.75. So it is less than 112 square inches. And then when you factor in that the corners are rounded off, it's probably under 100 square inches. So yes, woefully insufficient in terms of floor space. And, you know, they have a misleading dimension on the website, as most cages do. 
but this is meant to be a complete nature simulating habitat for your hamster. Doesn't that look like that would keep them so happy and enriched all the time? Especially this amazing platform that makes them work for their food and simulates how they would eat in nature. Because they would, right? Like that's definitely how they would eat in nature, right? No? So anyway, that is the Have a Trail Twist. It is probably the only cage of its type that I'm going to be revealing. I'm not going to be really revealing any connectable cages. I'm not going to review anything else in the oval line. I'm not going to do any KT, Critter Trail, any of that. I think all of those cages have been really well covered by other people, especially by Munchie on her channel, Munchie's Place for Homeless Pets. She has done extensive cage reviews on critter trails and tiny tails, but moreover, because she's a rescue, she has taken in animals who have actually been living in those cages. So if you want information about what it's actually like for a hamster to live in that kind of enclosure, that's who you should look to. I'm not going to review anything like that because it's all been done before and it's been done well. I don't have the capacity to show you the aftermath of a hamster living in a Tiny Tails castle or rocket ship, for example. So I'm not going to be doing any of those connectable systems. I am going to be doing cages that I have personally used or been tempted to use or that I just don't see other people talk about. I want to do the weird, weird ones. Um, and there's a lot of crazy new cages coming out. And very few of them are any improvement on what's already been out there. So uh, I'm planning to do a cage review about once a month. I'm going, I might do another one sooner because I'm going to be doing a, a series on chickpeas enclosures and it's going to start with a review of her original cage which if you have seen my other videos you've already gotten glimpses of and so you already have a hint of how ashamed I am <laughs> of that but if you stay tuned you'll see that you'll see a lot more so I hope you come back I hope you enjoyed this one and if you did please like and subscribe um, turn on notifications so you know when I upload future videos Look for me on Instagram. Um, I'll be popping up other places down the line. And uh, stay tuned. We'll see what happens next time. Take care. Bye.